Okay, you guys, so that's week 10. Um, now we are in production, basically, okay? So we'll look at cycles, uh, project reviews, uh, critical stage analysis, uh, meetings, um, problems, how to um, stop problems, and approval process, all right? Um, first of all, let's go through uh, the gentleman, what, he, what he's talking about. Um, the production cycles, all right? Uh, you want to basically look at your um, at your game and see the different steps that you have, all right? From your game doc, uh, you're gonna look at and you say, okay, I need to. Um, first of all, they have process production cycles that are different for each of the club. I could say club, all right? Uh, coders, game makers, and uh, I call them game makers, like okay, game designers. All right, and game art, basically, okay? Uh, you have a main production cycle that encompass everything, all right? So, okay, you do that, and that's big milestones, basically, the really big one, okay? And then inside those clubs, all right, you have their own production cycles too, all right? They're daily stuff, basically, all right? So it's kind of an intricate system, all right? That's where you have directors of teams, leads, and so forth, okay? Um, the bigger the team, the more in depth the production cycle should be, okay? Because you have, you'll go bad quicker, basically. The bigger the team you have, the more your production will go bad quick, and it will be hard to to fix, okay? Because you have more people involved in the scheme, all right, of things, and like just more people, more problems, always, okay? Um, that's why uh, in the production, and that's slightly on the side, uh, at my time. Uh, production was mainly people in, in, in teams were hired mainly for an hyper specialization of their skills. All right, at my time, and that was a big problem for me because I'm a journalistic knowledge. All right, it was harder for me to find jobs because of that. Now, what happened is that they got to that curve of going very, very big. All right, and that got them into big trouble, first of all, because there's a kind of an economic crisis that came around the corners, which they had to cut, you know, expenses basically to uh, increase their profit because the profit was going down um, because of manufacturing costs, basically. All right, uh, if the, the barrel of the, the, the barrel of gas is not under seventy dollars, you guys, everything goes up in manufacturing, even for video game. Because you have to move the video game from one place to the others, the case is made of plastic, and you know everything is made of gas pretty much. All right, so everything increases right away. Okay, number one. So they got to very very large team that become very cumbersome to deal with, and very expensive to deal with. All right, uh, and they were hyper hyper specialized, and they switched seven years ago, something like that. On seven years ago, you guys. They basically switch from hyper specialized huge team to smaller journalistic knowledge teams, which was a huge advantage for me. That's why I went big right away with my business at that point. Because when they did that, I was already doing that. What it did is that your production is smaller, so it's less expensive, first of all. Um, it's less problem, because you have yet less human problems. And it's faster to correct, okay? Number two. Because the people in your production have a journalistic knowledge now, let's say we're making a game together, right? Okay, I'm the, in the world before the hyper specialization, I'm the modeler, you're the texturer, dog, you're the animator. Okay, and we have a pipeline like that, it's done. Now, at that point, dog, get a deal with George Lucas to work on the latest TIE Fighter games, which is a huge deal, all right? Obviously, Dog is going to drop us, all right? It's obvious, you know, and if he wasn't dropping us, I would actually probably lose, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, thing for him because I'm like, well, come on, he has a huge opportunity, you should maybe grab it, okay? But you should leave your job properly, okay? Not just lay them down like that, okay? You should make sure it works properly when you switch, okay? But Dog leaves us right there right now let's say he doesn't even care okay because it was a small game we we're doing a thousand dollar a month then he's getting 20k a month all right so he switched obviously okay now we'll pardon my french we're screwed 
Okay, so now what do we do? Is I pro specialize in texture? Am I pro specialized in model uh, modeling? I don't know uh, animation. Obviously, it's not true, but let's say it's true. He doesn't know animation. Let's say it's like that. All right, we're stuck. Now we have to go out and go get someone else. By the time we get someone and can feed the team, that we actually get up to power the project, we are done in reality. All right, it will be we're bleeding to death in reality. We're stuck on production, it's stagnation and so forth. Okay, huge problem. Now, let's go back and do the new system that they are working on production now. We're all working together. I do modeling, you do texturing, you do animation. But I know rigging, you know animation, you know modeling. And I know texturing. Any of us can leave, we can take over the job until we can patch it up to make it work properly, but we can patch it up right there and get going, not stall the, pro the production, basically, all right? So that's how it is now, okay? Um, which gives smaller teams that are more flexible in production, all right? Flexibility for me is very important, especially in video games. That's why it's coming smaller teams, because in video game, ch stuff changes on a daily basis. Uh, because what you have on paper is never the same that's going to be on the, in the game itself when you play it, all right? So you're going to have to adjust anyway. And the more you do it, the less you have to adjust. The less you, you've done it, the more you have to adjust. So adjusting requires a lot of time when you have big teams, all right? When you have small team, adjusting is fairly quick. Just talk to you and that's it, we're well done. You know what I'm saying? We don't even need a meeting or anything like that. So you have to be very careful with that. Okay. Um, the plan in the pre-production, you basically, in pre-prod, you decide where you're going and how long it takes. Okay. We have, we're creating characters. We need five characters. We have one character artist. It'll take him a week per character. That's four weeks. Bing. Okay. So you know it. You need to put the steps in the proper orders in your production also, all right? Uh, in art, for example, what are all the steps are depending on the previous step, beside texturing. Texturing can be injected at any level of the production in art, all right? Not modeling. After you made a character, you skin it, you're getting ready for animation, you basically put a rig into it, you can't change its shape. If you change the shape, you have to redo the rigging, you have to re redo the freaking skinning. All right, so everything has to be redone. So you need to know your pipeline properly. And that's the specialty of the lead, of the director of, of each department, basically. All right, so each of those leaders basically make their own plans, depending on the game doc. All right, and it's um, first mock up, all right, very rough, okay? Second mock-up, you already have the shape of your things. Then you get to add rough animation on your stuff, okay? And then you refine your animation. And that's your steps, basically, in the art, okay? Everything is to be done in modules in your production cycles, all right? So you can reuse those modules, or it's worthless. Then you reduce cycles after cycles, over and over. You reinvent the wheels every time, okay? So you have to be smart, okay? Um, now, you just follow that as close as possible after that. So the lead, they decide all those things, and they go see their lead, basically the boss, and say, okay, you want that, 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 I need that much time for that, I need that much time for that, and resources that will talk about it, and so forth after that, okay? So that's pretty much how it works. Um, you monitor, obviously. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we talked about size. It problems need to be dealt right away in production cycles, okay? That's one thing you need to, to, to tell to your team members. If you have a problem, you come see me right away, no big deal. If you have a problem, you don't come see me right away, big deal, I'm gonna hammer you. Okay? You need to make them understand that it is not a big deal to have a problem. That's all you'll have in a game is problem after problem. As leads, you need a producer of the game. Your job is to just fix problems. If you don't like problems, don't get into that production job. All right? Because as, as a producer of a game, 
only freaking thing you do beside uh, debugging, I mean, testing your game, playing your game, is fixing problems. All right, obviously, you did your pre production, knowing where you're going, that's easy in reality. Because everything goes. Okay, you see it when you've done it on paper. Okay, it's very hard to do because you don't really, you know, it's paper. Okay, but it's easy in reality. It becomes hard when you actually put it in business because then the other problem comes every time. You need to be able to classify your problem by orders of importance. What's more important than that? I'm not kidding you. All right? And that's all you do is troubleshooting those problems one after the others. So if your team members are scared every time they encounter a problem, like it's like the, the, gener the, the generals are losing the war, that are scared to tell to their king, you know, that they have a problem right here because if they like, well, if I tell to my king that as a general right now I'm having a problem, I'm not winning, I'm going to get losing my head. No, that's, you need to stop that right away because they won't tell you the problem. You need to tell those guys right away. Problems, that's all you're going to get. We're going to get problems after problems. Our job is to fix right away those things. All right? The, the more it, it lasts, the worse it gets because the, everything is depending on previous steps. So it snowballs to become huge at the end. All right? So, and, and you'll see artists and people get scared of losing their job and they'll get scared of telling you what's going on exactly and it's a teamwork so they'll be like oh I can put it on some other team or something like that that might not be a problem you know what I'm saying and they'll tell you well no that wasn't a problem that's their fault because of that and that so you need to really be able to figure out where the problems are quickly all right that's very important because the and the bigger the team the more they'll send the ball back and forth okay because they don't want to get hammered okay um, what kind of problems do you mean? I mean, like, is it like technical problem mainly, mainly technical problems? All right, uh, technical problems uh, doesn't work. The coding doesn't work. You know, uh, the art doesn't fit. You don't know why. Um, like, for example, an Uncharted when he's on the on the, on the train. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know if it's Uncharted 1 or 2, I think it's Uncharted 2, all right? He's on the train and running and stuff. They had a major coding problem with all the weapons he was dropping and catching. Because it moves, all right? That's a big technical problem. Um, a technical problem, for example, with the, uh, the security model. You know what I'm saying? How do, it's getting hacked, you know? You can abuse the system, you can abuse and find, uh, uh, you know, stuff that will make you play the game and beat the game really quickly, you know what I'm saying? Uh, stuff like that all the time, all right? And gameplay stuff. It's not fun, you know what I'm saying? And uh, there's a lot of stuff. You, you debug something that is not working properly, and then there's three or four stuff that don't work anymore. You know what I'm saying? So you have, to, you have a choice. You say, okay, do I, need to, do I fix those, you know, do I leave that bug and have those three things works? You know, how do I fix that bug and those three things don't work? What's most important? You know, and it'll be 24 7 like that. It just doesn't stop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the mesh is too heavy. In 3D games, or in all the games, too much heart. Your heart is too heavy. You know, you're making an animation and you give me 60 frames. I don't need 60 frames for a loop. Give me 10, 12 frames for a loop and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Tons of stuff like that. Collision not working. You know, ton of stuff like that. Scoring not done properly. You know, no feedback for the players, for example, has to be redone. All right? They need to be changed right away because the art, the game, and the coders are interdependent in what they do. You know what I'm saying? So it'll bite you back anyway. All right? So because the error you did might not bother you, let's say you did a skeleton with 58 bones and you're dealing with XNA. And XNA, because XNA is a direct X10 or 9, I can't remember, it doesn't take past 57 bones because of his matrix of coding, all right? And you haven't figured that one out yet. You know what I'm saying? That's a big problem because your character doesn't get into the, the game engine. And you're looking everywhere and you can't figure it out. You know, and then you have to look at the technical files and nobody's telling you why. You just have to look, oh, it's direct X9. And then the coder say, oh, direct X9, that's only matrix for 57 bones, I don't know. How many bones do you have? Oh, I got 58 because that's too many in the pinky, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's 
that's right there. Uh, I like my production si my production si cycles to be as simple as possible because I deal with small teams. All right. Uh, I'm fairly large in the way I do my cycles because it's small teams. The bigger the team, the smaller you want cycles because more control over time. All right. Um, okay. What what else does he say? Yeah. In the game, it's always simple and easy at the beginning. It's like a small river, all right, that gets bigger and worse and worse and harder and harder to control. And it gets even harder to control when you get the publisher to get his nose into it, all right? Because at one point, you're going to have to involve him when you've got time to get a build, all right, like actually he's playable and so forth. You're going to have to involve your, pro your producer, all right? Uh, your publisher, I mean, and that's going to increase the difficulty of problems in your cycles uh, because he's going to want to have a PR, he's going to want to have uh, a deadline for sale, he's going to want to have, uh, you know, certain networking, certain stuff, you know, and he's going to want to mani to actually look at the game and say, you know what, you can't do that because we're selling it to that type of people and that doesn't deal, that doesn't work with that, with that type of people and so forth. All right, let's see. Uh, what else does he talk about? Um, yeah, localization where he talked about that. Let me stop the recording.